Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video we are going to be spotting the knot once again and this is a really interesting video because this seller on eBay is actually plagiarizing some of my spindle cable listings. Now that's interesting to me because we're going to go over this listing together that he has for an assembled spindle cable and many of you already can see that we have some issues with this cable and the first issue mainly is the fact that you guys can see we have a transparent casing here which would not be too big of a deal other than the fact you have no ratings on this cable whatsoever right so many of you are saying probably well, what's the big deal with that it's a PVC outer casing at least according to his listing we're going to cover that in detail but I want to ask you guys a couple interesting questions when we go through that the first thing I want to point out when we say spot the knot, let's look here at where the cable's actually entering the spindle connector. First of all, he's using a piece of heat shrink that's isolated for ground. Okay, so this heat shrink, when you see a green line coming from that yellow piece of heat shrink, those are a grounded piece of heat shrink that he's using to insulate the connector itself. Not a big deal, just something to really pay attention to. Um, because again, typically when you're doing an insulation at the butt end of the connector, you would once again typically use a standard black piece of heat shrink because again, that's usually used to indicate there's a ground present, okay? Which there may very well be. I don't know how he wired this cable. The other area I want to point out real close is that on the base end of the cable, um, or I should say the other end of the base end, he actually has leads coming out with no boot connecting here. So what you basically see here is just a ground and we see here these other three leads but what's interesting is there is no shield leaving this. It is a double shielded cable because we can see the internal braid right here but we do not see, I'm going to try to move my mouse out of the way um, just so the bottom of the screen doesn't pop up but we do not see any shield drain coming in okay now maybe it's just this picture so let's go through the picture once again this is the piece of heat shrink I'm talking about once again if you see a piece of heat shrink with yellow and green striped this is typical to indicate a ground over here we see a ground and we have our three power leads where is our shield drain and it's pretty interesting when we analyze this we don't see a shield drain connected unless it's connected on this end, which, again, I suppose is possible, but it's interesting considering that his connector has only got four pins in there. So I'm just telling you, after doing over 200 cable assemblies, that's a very, very, very tricky thing if he's pulling that off, which I truly don't believe, and I'm going to prove to you why I don't believe it. Okay, guys, I wanted to just do... A quick experiment or not so much an experiment but give you more of a forensic inside depth because many of you were looking at the video about the spindle connector this is the spindle connector okay and you can see we have pin 4 right here we also have our pin 4 right here and you can see the cup and this cup is once again designed maximum for 16 gauge cable now I want to just show you something. I have a piece of my double shielded 16 gauge and it does have the ratings. It's a little scratched up. This is just a test piece I use as a template as I build with. I cut a 16 gauge lead. This is the white lead from this cable. I also saved my 16 gauge shield drain that I do on when I assemble all of my cables. I save these because of course these are tin braided copper. So I save them. They're good to have extra conductors. And in this case, it's going to prove my point very quick, very quickly. Um, you can see here we've got pin four. Here is our 16 gauge, and this is not tinned yet. You can see it is tin braided copper. This will slide right into that cup. And if you look at this cup right now, it's perfectly full. If I was to go through and actually even the side that's tinned, and this is just from where I snip it to build my cables, where would you insert this in that cup? Once again, impossible. So let's say he did it from the top or from the bottom. How much clearance do you think you're going to have from a dead short? Do you know how unsafe that is? 
So once again, we spotted the knot. You can see your clearance there. You probably less than you have a couple thousands tops, maybe ten thousands. Okay. So you can see it's absolutely impossible to use a 16 gauge shield drain, a 16 gauge lead, and put them both into the cup on this end. Okay, so for my novice guys out there, now you know what you're dealing with. And that's why I say, be very, very careful. Know what you're buying. We're gonna just go through his picture some more. Okay, just so we can clarify too, these are crimp connectors he he shrunk over. He claims this is a fully soldered cable. We don't know. Once again, I want to I want to just let you guys know uh, this seller is based out of country of the U.S. So this I'm really doing this video more towards uh, my actual international clients because I get questions on on components all the time, and this one is just really interesting to me because I accidentally found this just because. The listing came up and was flagged to me by uh, eBay to let me know that somebody had used some of my listings. Well, if we come over here once again and we analyze closely at the base end of the cable with the conductors coming out, we do not see that shield drain. We see a clean cut. This is not insulated as it should be, and we do not see a shield drain. Now, once again, does that mean he totally built this cable incorrectly? Technically, I would not know unless I purchased one, but unless he's 100% accurate in the sense that he grounded on the fourth pin on the spindle connector, where he also used the ground right here, which should be connected. We don't know if it is, but this is the ground lead right here, once again, with the uh, yellow and green stripe wire. If he attached both of those where he claims in the listing, we're going to go over that, that he's using a 16 gauge ground, it's impossible to do. Okay? It's totally impossible to do. Okay? And I'm going to clarify that. We'll go through it together. Um, here is, again, the base he's showing. And we go through here. He's showing you his cable. But once again, it's just very, very odd that this cable has no power ratings on it. Let's get into some more odd details. Okay? Things that just don't add up. Um, I want to come over here. Let's see. Oh, sorry. I want to come over here. I'm trying not to disclose who the seller is because that's something I feel that I, I just want to be professional that way. And again, I'm being totally honest in disclosing. And you'll see for yourself, the text that he's using right here is all from my listing. And we can see this because if I come over here, and just so we know we're on my listing, many of you have seen this listing. It's from my assembled 20-foot VFD spindle cable. If we come down here, and I just come up a little bit, let's read, shall we? This is the fast way to get your spindle running, eliminating EMI signal contamination from the beginning, making your system bulletproof. Um, this is the fast way to get your spindle running, eliminating EMI, EMI signal contamination from the beginning, making your system bulletproof with the proper cable assembly. Let's see, it's all word for word. All connections on this cable are soldered with flux with the lowest possible electrical resistance and commercial grade quality. All the VFD connections feature circle ring connectors for safety. Once again, guys, it's like the game of memory. Remember that game? All connections on this cable are soldered with flux. And I, I went over here in green text. Ground lead for the shield drain is soldered to the cable's ground ring connector to assure all VFDs used with this cable share the same ground point for continuity. Now, it's interesting... He did not do that. He wrote here, all the VFD connections feature circle ring connectors for safety. So that's where he deviated from my listing. Okay? That's my first listing, I should say, that he deviated from. Let's go through this a little more in depth. Okay? If we look closely here, he's saying the listing is for an assembled three-meter cable. Again, he's a non-U.S. Uh, seller. Not a big deal. Um, but he states here, this cable is rated to 600 volt and 90 degrees Celsius. Okay? Pay attention to these details because as we go through this, it becomes more forensics as far as what we're looking at for technical details. And my guys who are into electronics, they're going to understand this very, very closely as we go through. And you're going to have the same questions most likely I did. We come over here. We can see technical data. Okay, Normal voltage, 3 to 500 volt. I've never heard of a rating like that. Cable structure, it could be because it's international. I don't know. 
uh, bare copper fine conductors, that's fine. Properties, extensively oil resistant, flame resistant. And then as we come down here, this is when things get interesting again. Best cable to stop interference between your spindle VFD or stepper motors can be used for spindles up to 4.5K. Now, once again, we come down here, and isn't this amazing? This looks like my text. Let's see. Come over here, and we'll come right here, and I'll just scroll down on my listing. Here is my spindle cable listings. Many of you are familiar with this. Right here. Okay, now we just read up. He says this cable is rated to 600 volt, and now it's saying 80 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius temp rating. But if we come up, what did he say is temp rating? Oh, here we go. 600 volt, 90 degrees Celsius. So which is it? Which is your temperature rating on your cable? We really don't know because if it was actually rated to whatever listing he's saying, it's typically on the cable itself. And what do I mean by that? If we look, I'll go on my listing, and if we look closely, I'll just zoom in. You can see my cable's ratings are right on the cable 16 gauge. It tells you everything on the cable itself, as it should, because that's regarding safety. Okay? If you guys are purchasing cables, whether you're in the country or out of the country, I'm telling you now, make sure the details are met. This is serious, serious stuff. These spindles are usually taking three-phase power. If they're taking three-phase power, you're putting yourself, your family, whoever else is in your shop, and on top of that, your equipment at risk. And you can see here, when it's properly done, you can see the cable's PVC rating, uh, or excuse me, the PVC casing has a rating inscribed on it and that's exactly the way it should be okay but this really gets more interesting like I said as we scroll out we come out of here and like I said you could see all of my text he decided to use and it's not even correct I mean um, right here this is the assembled spindle cable I'll close out of this we don't need that anymore I will go into my VFD spindle cable where it's unassembled. Many of you are familiar with this kit. And when we come down right here, this is where everything gets the same again. This cable is rated to 600 volt. Once again, he screws up on his temperature. He doesn't know what that is. This cable is designed for your spindle to VFD connection to protect your CNC system from ENI EMI penetration. This cable is designed for your spindle to VFD connection to protect your CNC system from EMI penetration. The cable is professional robotics grade. The cable is professional robotics grade and features mylar foil and tin braided copper. Again, features both mylar foil, tin braided copper shielding, twine separator. Once again, I explain about the shield drain. Uh, the, my conductors are tin braided copper. He then uses 16 AWG ground drain for the minimal electrical resistance. I don't know where he would have that because we didn't see it issued on his cable. Okay, all we saw is that he copied what I did. The interesting thing, once again, aside from the fact that he gets his temperature rating all screwed up, is I'm going to close out my cable because we already seen that he plagiarized. But when we come over here, this is where it gets interesting. It says test voltage 4,000 volts, nominal voltage 3 to 500 volts. I don't know where he got all of these stats for this cable but I'm telling you guys you better be careful because this is very serious I mean it's bad enough he can't write a listing himself which is that's his business but when I see a blatant disregard once again for trying to sell things to people where he's not even certain of what he's selling because when we look at this thing you guys have no way of knowing what this cable is rated to you're basically taking his word, unless he's including something in writing for the cable. I mean, I guess that's possible, to be in all fairness. But um, looking at this, like I said, there's some questions here that make no sense. And mainly, when we look at the four leads coming out, he's claiming there's a 16-gauge ground drain. And anyone who's worked on these spindle connectors will let you know you have four pins. The fourth pin is the ground. If the fourth pin is the ground, the typical lead size that one of those pins will accept comfortably is 16 gauge.
Okay, I know that. Once again, I've done over 200 of them. You can check my feedback. But that's not what's most interesting. If it accepts a maximum gauge of 16, then how would you fit a shield drain and the actual ground lead right here soldered to that? Guys, it's impossible. It's impossible. You can't do it. So unless he's splicing or doing some odd cockamamie thing, I'm telling you right now, be very careful. Very careful of what you guys are buying because I'm telling you, I'm seeing this happen more and more. They see an opportunity because there's money to be made, they feel, and then they list stuff where, once again, up here at 600 volt, 90 degrees Celsius, the cable temp rating, and then down here, the cable's rated 600 volt and 80 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So which is it? What are you guys buying? Not normal voltage, 3 to 500 volt. Uh, test voltage, 4,000 volt. Nominal voltage, 3 to 500 volt. I mean, we're all over the place. We're all over the place. You really have no idea of what you're buying, mainly due to the fact that you guys are looking at a listing, many of you, and you see that the ratings meet the criteria of your spindle. I have this happen all the time, and you think you're doing the right thing. And technically speaking, he is using a double shielded cable. But when you do not see a shield drain on this, and, and when we look over here again and we don't see a shield drain being exited out of the sheath on this end, and then we come through here, we only have one other area to assume that there's a shield drain, and that would be on the plug itself, but once again, we only have four pins. He's claiming it's using a 16-gauge ground. Can I tell you a secret? I have to have my cable made with a 16-gauge ground. So if he's watching, have your cable made with it. Do yourself a favor, because truth be told, Normal spindle cables, normal 16-gauge cables do not use a 16-gauge ground drain. They typically use maybe 2 millimeters of, uh, of total drain, or excuse me, um, 1 millimeter of total drain in as far as conductors. You have to specify what conductor you want made inside the cable. So, again, you'd want to look at that. You want to double-check it. But for those of you outside the country, please pay attention, guys. Please pay attention to what you're buying. And, you know, I mean, I, like I said, this is more of a catastrophe waiting to happen in the sense this isn't, isn't even insulated right here. This should be insulated whenever there's a splicing done on a cable where, again, it's end. He clean cut everything. I have no idea why he didn't use a boot. But then again, I don't know why he didn't uh, or he's using a, a actual sense of crimp connectors. And then he went over with heat shrink over the whole thing. Not, nothing so much wrong with that other than the fact if those are solder connectors, you wouldn't use crimp connectors. So that just doesn't make sense because a crimp connector has a plastic joiner that is crimped. Many of you know that. You can see that on YouTube. You can check what I'm saying to once again make sure it's accurate. But I'm telling you guys, be careful. Okay? Um, to all of my subscribers, I love you guys. I hope this video has been helpful to my new guys out there. I hope this video saves you some money. Um, and if anything, you know, his cable looks nice, you could ask him. Ask him the questions I said. Number one question, you're using 16-gauge shield drain, you claim. Where is it attached to? Because if it's on pin four on your spindle connector, how are you joining that with the lead that I'm assuming he did, which he should have done, which would be the, uh, the actual ground here with the yellow wire with the green stripe? So if he attached that 16-gauge lead... How is he attaching another 16-gauge lead inside of a spindle connector? You can ask him that, if that's typically the way he used the shield drain. If he didn't, then where's the shield drain coming out here? Because it's not attached to anything, guys. So that means your cable is basically functioning like a regular cable and not acting as a shielded cable where it will dissipate the EMI. You know? Just, you know, you can check this out for yourselves, but be careful. All of you, these videos, these forensic type videos that I'm getting more and more requests for, but I, I, I really can't believe how many of these videos I really could do because more and more components are showing up like this. And it's frightening because if they're doing honest work, they're doing honest work, but when you're hacking and it's apparent you're hacking, you can just read and clarify the details. But many of you already picked these details up. For the guys out there who are new, they're the ones that need to be protected, and we need to keep them on the straight and narrow. So 
again, I hope the video has been helpful to all of my subscribers. I love you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, if you're looking to buy a spindle cable, whether you buy it from me or not, and you have questions, ask. Okay, spindle cable, if it's built in correctly, number one, it's going to be unsafe. Number two, it's not going to function the way it should. And that means your system will most likely lack stability. And even if it's stable now, you don't know if it's going to be unstable later. Do it right the first time and have peace of mind. Okay, questions don't usually cost anything unless I have to do, you know, full data analyze, analyzation on whatever we're working with or building. But if you're just asking a general question on, you know, something like this, message me. I'll get back to you as soon as possible and we'll be set. Right now, of course, the shop is picking up. Um, peak season's coming. I, I'm hoping you guys are all getting ready for the holiday. I hope you're all doing well. Um, again, I love all my subscribers. If you want to message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com or... You can message me through my eBay store, and I'll answer you guys as soon as possible. Thank you all for your support. Take care.